Domestic violence is our new COVID-19 crisis. Are we surprised? Definitely not. According to UN, numbers have gone up. Places like China, Turkey, Spain, Italy, and basically globally have reported increased numbers. Dr. Onati here. Today, I want us to explore more of this because it is happening every day. Yesterday, I posted a graphic post of myself, a video and a short, basically a short video and a picture of myself illustrating abuse. Women who are abused have signs. We need to see them. If we are people that are around them, we need to see them. I'm going to illustrate to you what you can pick up for women who are undergoing all this pain. You will be able by the end of this interview to know what else you can pick up in this type of women. According to UN, one in three women undergoes or goes through trauma, either emotionally, physically, sexually, by coercion, threats. These things happen every day. And according to their studies in 2017, the global meta stats that is reported or that was reported showed 35% of these matters were intimate partner related. Of course, we are, not, we are not surprised with these stats. Today, I want us to explore what are the causes or probably rather say, what can you pick up for people that are around you? Right now, this is a crisis these people are facing because they are trapped with their perpetrators. We are going through COVID-19 where we are asked and told to do social distancing. This is actually harmful for these type of people because they are victims to these people and they are trapped, they are trapped with them. According to the studies, people that go through these traumas, they rarely report them because there's a sense of shame, guilt, and a lot of times, if you didn't know, a lot of times even the people in the, so, in the high social economic status, they have higher cases that they do not report because of the shame I've just mentioned. And of course, women are at risk, people who have no education or low education status, people that have many children due to coercion or paper, probably threats, they never had any choices to make with their partners, they were coerced to do whatever their partners wanted from them. And of course, the day-to-day -day challenges in partners or maybe in marriages, the conflicts, some of them, they lead to physical abuse. All right. So how do we identify these women? Honestly, they are working around us. They are working in front of us. We work with these people. We live with them. Sometimes you will miss it when you don't see the signs. I'll make an example. As a family physician, we see these women all the time. I'll make an example of one woman who came rushing, wanting a test because he, she was suspecting that she might have broken her nose. On further inquiry because I could see her poor eye contact of course the scars and people that go through this trauma they are very embarrassed they are they are shameful they they feel the guilt they tend to lie mm -hmm. not necessarily protecting their perpetrators part of it is that because they are scared they are horrified of them because when they go back home they go into the same situation I had to explore because I already had a good rapport with my patient and the truth came out and then we had to go through the stages of reporting. But the problem with reporting these types of crimes, a lot of times women sit quietly because they are scared. They are scared to report these people because a lot of times they feel they, there is a freedom of choice here. If they do not do anything further other than reporting and also getting the court orders, it keeps going on and on. And unfortunately, this could actually affect children because there's also family violence where a child is being abused emotionally, physically, and sexually. The crisis we have today is right now, because of COVID-19, we are socially distancing. These places are closed. The shelters where these women would take heed. Two, the police system, they are overworked. They are understaffed. You call the police according to the studies, there are no responses because people are out there in the field. How do we keep this condition? By someone like you and me reporting it. These are the times we need to get connected with our friends, with our colleagues and check on each other. Give them that text, call them, hear their voice. All right, hear their voice and understand where they at emotionally. Because a, a lot of times, actually, if you know you have a friend or a family member who goes through these issues, a text is probably impersonal. Better call, 
and i've seen quite a few ideas as i was scrolling through ideas of how to approach this topic some people they probably if you have access to maybe a pizza service in your town or your city you pick up 911 that is the helpline 911 and you start ordering pizza you give your name you basically give your name you give the address where you at and as a person on the other side picking up this woman is definitely in danger he or she will ask are you in danger you definitely say yes you're not elaborating the police would get to that place right away so women please speak up speak up this can only end when we speak up and those that are around these women that go through this speak up advise these women to speak up i know that it's hard for people who live in rural places or in the villages that have no access to telecommunications but as i said we always have people around us people that go through trauma or abuse like this or domestic violence they tend to be withdrawn they tend to uh, poor eye contact suddenly they start lying all right it is summertime they start wearing long sleeves usually there's been probably scars they start wearing sunglasses even inside the room right those are the few examples that you need to pick up and notice that those are red flags that you need to actually act when you see those things and a lot of times like i said these women are so vulnerable and fearful so scared to report these cases mm -hmm. because like i said they are scared to go back to their perpetrators and like i said the stats shows that 35 percent of murders is due to intimate partners guys this is very serious and as i said it's happening to every class every class in the past we always thought it is women that are in the low socioeconomic status we're seeing every time there's colleagues that have died lost their lives from their colleagues that were both probably doctors or lawyers what i'm trying to say is Domestic violence is domestic violence. It doesn't matter which class you are in. If you have an abusive spouse or a partner, it is what it is. So us, people that work with these women, we need to be observant. We need to report these things because like I said, there's a lot of fear. These women are vulnerable. They are fearful of losing either their sense of self. They are fearful to lose their homes because like I said, abuse has something to do with coercion. The perpetrators tend to be very uh, threatful. They threaten these women. And a lot of times, like I said, women that probably have no uh, education, they tend to stay in these relationships. Not because they are staying because probably they love, probably yes, they still love their partners, but it is about safety in their minds. People that go through trauma, by the way, people that go through trauma, their interpretation of reality, it becomes distorted they think of the now they think of of course what if i report this person now what's going to happen to my tomorrow they are always fearful of that and like i said a lot of times these women have been choked in the past and a lot of times remember this when they report remember this people that report crime like this it has not happened the first time it has happened several times and this is actually happening even in same sex same sex relationships I'm not going to dwell much on that because a lot of times the studies that go out there, we talk about uh, the opposite sex. As we all know, the world has actually homosexuality and heterosexual partners. These domestic violence occurrences are as common in both uh, our demographics. So for me today, I'm here pleading with you, you and I, that graphic, you go back to the last graphic uh, video that I posted. Go back to that video and identify a face that you recall that has or you have noticed such a presentation like i said we meet these people we dine with them we sit with them we laugh with them and they're going through this pain every day so go back to that video feel that pain i'm illustrating there and help that woman by doing that you are saving a life all right you are saving a life let's stand up for our sisters and report like i said these women are scared they are they are feeling they're filled with shame they need us they need our help go back there and change the world and check on that colleague check on that sister check on that uh, on that uh, cousin check on your mother because even women like mm -hmm. older women they do go through this trauma and unfortunately things like drugs alcohol 
they do actually exacerbate these conditions. As much as we are social distancing, other countries are still allowing people to go to, uh, to get alcohol and they come back home and do all these perpetrations, right? So my, I'm pleading with you guys, go back to that videography I made there. It was meant to be graphic. It was meant to illustrate the pain our sisters are feeling every day because you and I are quiet. You take care and go and make a change. I love you all.